Reverend Charles Johnson was a mathematics tutor at Christchurch, Oxford in 1856 when he first met Alice Little and her siblings, who were the children of the Dean of the College. Dodgson's friendship with the children led him to create one of the most famous and enduring children's stories, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. The story, which began life as Alice's Adventures Underground, was first told to Alice and her sisters, Lorena and Edith, on a trip down the river on the 4th of July, 1862. Written in sepia-coloured ink and including 37 pen and ink illustrations, the manuscript was presented to Alice as an early Christmas present in November 1864. The copy you see here is a leather-bound facsimile released by the Folio Society in 2010. It was called a limited edition, but the print run was pretty large at 3,750 copies. The edition comes with a companion booklet describing the adventures of the manuscript itself. When Dodgson was encouraged by friends to publish his manuscript, he made some changes to the story, removing some of the family references and adding two new chapters, Pig and Pepper and a Mad Tea Party. And he sought out an artist to create the illustrations. The artist was John Tenniel. Some of John Tenniel's illustrations, such as Alice swimming in a pool of tears, were based on Dodgson's own drawings, while others of new characters, such as the Hatter and the March Hare, were of Tenniel's own creation. The story itself was published under the new title Alice's Adventures in Wonderland in 1865. If you're after a copy of Alice with Tenniel's iconic illustrations, I highly recommend The Complete Alice, including both Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass and what Alice found there really is the ultimate edition of Lewis Carroll's much-loved classic from the original publisher Macmillan. If you only want one classic edition of Alice in Wonderland, then this is the one I think you should get. It's packed full of amazing exclusive extra features from the Macmillan archives and a forward by Philip Pullman. It has a glorious die-cut cover with intricate embossed two-foil detail, head and tail bands, red foiled edges and a ribbon marker, making this just a beautiful gift edition. Tenniel's original illustrations were created in close consultation with the author, so they're as close to his vision as you will get. And since they're the only versions available for half a century, they are also the iconic versions most people know and love. The dreamlike illustrations in The Complete Alice are colour versions of Sir John Tenniel's originals. They were produced in 1911 by a celebrated artist called Harry Theaker, under the direction of Tenniel himself, and the series was completed by contemporary watercolourist Diz Wallace. The Nursery Alice, originally published by Macmillan in 1890, was the very first colour edition of Alice. With a new, younger readership in mind, Carroll rewrote Alice, simplifying and abridging the original text, while Tenniel redrew, enlarged and coloured 20 of his iconic illustrations. First published by Macmillan in 1907, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, the Little Folks edition, is a charming miniature edition of Lewis Carroll's classic tale. It was specially abridged for younger readers. I'm not typically a huge fan of abridged editions, but since these abridgments were actually done by the author himself, I think they're okay. A sixth of the length of the original 1865 edition, both volumes feature more than 30 brightly coloured illustrations by John Tenniel, uniquely featuring Alice in a red dress. They have a luxurious red Wibbelin binding and gold sprayed page edges. Rackham's Alice is charming, and his images are beautiful, yet also capture the mystery of the work. First published in 1907, Flame Tree Studio has just recently released a very nice deluxe edition with over 100 black and white illustrations by Arthur Rackham as well as by John Tenniel. A very playful Alice drawn in classic 40s illustration style by Irene Cloak. There have been multiple versions of this edition released and although it's out of print at the moment, it's fairly easy to find second hand. Mervyn Peake was born and spent his childhood in China. He's most famous for his Gormenghast series, and his illustrations for Alice are stunning black and white drawings, which brilliantly capture the dangerous nature of Wonderland.
The deluxe presentation of Adrienne Sigou's illustrations by the French publishing house of Ernest Flammarion is an absolute delight. Sigou's images are wonderfully delightful in any setting, but they are produced in an unusually large format for this 1949 edition. It's absolutely sublime. This is an abridgment of Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland for very young children. Wilhelmina Schermelet was a Dutch illustrator and author of children's books, including the Winky series. Her Wonderland has a very classic 50s fairyland feel to it. This edition is a whimsical retelling of the Alice story, illustrated with concept art for the original Disney movie by Mary Blair, who was re-released in 2016. In the annotated Alice, Lewis Carroll's mathematical riddles and curious wordplay, ingeniously embedded throughout the Alice works, are delightfully decoded and presented at the margins of the text, along with original correspondence, amusing anecdotal detours, and fanciful illustrations by a variety of famous artists. This one's really cute. In 1965, a philatelist called Gerald King decided that since the General Post Office was not celebrating the centennial anniversary of the publication of Alice in Wonderland with a commemorative stamp, he would create his own set of fantasy stamp designs. This idea grew until it evolved into a book brimming with clever references to the story and showing his love of philately. In it, Wonderland stamps and envelopes are sent through the Wonderland Post to and from various characters, paired with relevant quotes from the books and various notes about the fantasy artifacts and their origins. Tova is the Swedish-speaking Finnish artist best known for her Moomin world. Her fantastical art Alice is a delight and it was recently published in English for the first time in 2011 by London's Tate Museum. Ralph Steadman is best known for his inkblot style drawings. His Alice is audacious and irreverent and occasionally inappropriate, so it's definitely a version for adults. The Graham Johnston Twins version of Alice was published by World Distributors in 1968. These British sisters are best known for their delicate and detailed artwork, and their wonderland is a bright and playful place. Spanish artist Salvador Dali was commissioned to illustrate a special edition of the Carol Classic, consisting of 12 heliogloves, one for each chapter of the book, and an original signed etching in four colours as the frontispiece. His vibrantly coloured, bizarre and surrealist styles emphasises the absurdities and dreamlike qualities of Wonderland. Moritz Kennel uses vibrant colours and strong shapes in his illustrations, giving them a strong 70s vibe. He is also well known as an illustrator of little golden books, such as Old MacDonald Had a Farm.
Justin Todd is a British illustrator whose wonderland is bright and beautiful. His illustrations are extremely detailed through his working gauche with extremely fine brushes. Alice Through the Needle's Eye is an authorised Alice sequel. Alice is trying to thread a needle by the fire on a snowy afternoon when she finds herself in an alphabetical land populated by Siamese twin cats. The Welsh rabbit, the kangaroo, the spelling bees, an Italian air hairdresser who uses a small crocodile as a pair of scissors. Jack and Jill and best of all, the Grampus. This Marvel comic adaptation was published in the late 80s and although the artist is uncredited, I think it's possibly John Ridgway. Peter Weaver's tale showcases a classic Alice presented in elegant watercolours. Malcolm Ashman works primarily with oil and watercolour. His illustrations suggest a surprisingly realistic and concrete interpretation of Wonderland. This edition was put out by the okay. Carroll Foundation in Melbourne in 1990. The black and white illustrations by Australian artist Gavin O'Keefe are charmingly creepy. Here's another Australian edition and one of the rare retellings that I keep in my collection, mainly for its quite novel approach. The story is set in Aboriginal Australia. The white rabbit becomes a white kangaroo and the red queen is a witch spirit. Despite the hideous cover, this combined version of the Alice books features some really lovely watercolour illustrations by Czech artist Dagmar Bakoyo. Helen Oxenbury's Alice was published by Walker in a signed limited edition in 1999 and The Looking Glass in 2005. Her Alice is a confident blonde child set in the modern era and nearly every spread contains either a spot drawing or a watercolour painting. Helen won the Kate Greenaway Medal and the Kurt National Award for her interpretation of Alice. Enchanting soft watercolours by Lisbeth Zergis feature a delightful wonderland of whimsy. Robert Sabuda's Alice is the most incredible pop-up book published in 2003. There are seven spreads with breathtaking supersized pop-ups along with extra pop-ups contained in the mini storybooks. The peep show of Alice falling is truly creative.
Anne by Chelier's Alice was published in a limited edition of 600 by the CFM Gallery in 2005. It has over 100 gorgeous mystical illustrations, including giant foldouts. seen through the eyes of top British fantasy illustrator Rodney Matthews is showcased through lovely fantastical illustrations set in an interplanetary wonderland landscape, including six double-page artwork spreads. This is part of the Templar Collector's Classic series. Robert Ingpen's Alice and Looking Glass feature over 70 lush watercolours which capture Wonderland in all its stunning glory. This is a large format edition lavishly illustrated by Ukrainian-Canadian artist Oleg Lubchenko with Wonderland laid out in stunning pencil charcoal drawings. This is a bind-up of Alice's Adventures in Wonderlands and Through the Looking Glass. It has a manga-like cover by Jill Thompson, which is a little misleading because the interior chapter illustrations are in a softer style by Jenny Frizzle. In this version, Lewis Carroll's classic story is retold by Harriet Castor and it features lovely stylized illustrations by Zdenko Basic with pop-up playing cards and pull tabs. Make sure you do not get the very inferior paperback version, which is missing all of the fun interactive elements. This is a simple version for children, adapted by Ronnie Randall and illustrated by Robert Dunn. Camille Rose Garcia is an American artist and her house is created in a creepy cartoon style that highlights some of the darker elements of Wonderland. Bridge text and sweet illustrations make these picture books definitely designed for children, with glittery covers and bright but gentle watercolours inside.
since childhood, Yayoi Kusama has had a rare condition that makes her see colourful spots on everything she looks at. Her vision of Alice, both literally and creatively, is thus naturally surreal, almost hallucinogenic. Yasin Gusalev's Wonderland is a gorgeous Escher-like landscape. The book is stunning, with an adorable Read Me bookmark. The twist is that every illustration is actually part of a single painting that you can only see in its entirety hidden under the dust jacket. Benjamin Lacombe's absolutely magical Baroque fantasy wonderland is a world full of satirical references. His fantastic illustrations use gouache, oils and watercolours to create a graphic and surrealistic landscape. The book is available in French, German and Spanish, but an English version has been promised for some time. This is a lovely version, a complete and unabridged text of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, accompanied by Anna Bond's signature whimsical style illustrations in full colour. French artist Rebecca Dautremer's dreamlike illustrations bring a vibrant new life to Carol's beloved characters. The Folio Society Limited Edition illustrated by Charles Van Sandrick is probably one of the most stunning editions out there. Now I've covered this one in more detail in another video, so if you want to see more pictures you can go watch that one. Please share your favourite version in the comments below and thanks so much for watching. Till next time! <laughs>